the next basic element is a capacitor and it is given by the symbol as usual we define a voltage V and a current I consistent with passive sign convention. I think from uh, basic physics classes all of you would be familiar with uh, the prototype structure of a capacitor which is which consists of two parallel plates okay, with some area and some distance between them okay and again from basic physics you would know that if you apply a certain voltage v between the plates that causes a charge plus q on the plate which is connected to the positive of this voltage v and minus q which is connected to the negative of this voltage v okay and the relationship between q and v happens to be linear with a proportionality constant c which is called the capacitance okay c is the capacitance measured in farads so what it means is if you have a 1 farad capacitance you apply 1 volt across it there'll be 1 coulomb of charge on each of the plates there will be plus 1 coulomb on the plate which is connected to the positive side of the voltage and minus 1 coulomb on the other plate. Okay. And this uh, C itself is given by some permittivity times area divided by the distance. Okay. Now, as before we are not concerned with de these details, we are not concerned with what charges there are, we are not concerned with uh, fields inside the capacitor and so on. We only want a relationship between the terminal current and the terminal voltage, Okay, that is the voltage between the terminals and the current through the terminals. Okay. And also this type of formula, this works for a case where you have two parallel plates uh, separated by a uniform distance. Now, if the shapes are odd and the distance keeps changing, you have to evaluate this capacitance using electromagnetics, using some uh, integrals and so on. So, again that is not our concern at all. The point is, if you have two conductors separated uh, by some insulating medium, you will have this uh, linear relationship between charge and voltage, okay, which we will now convert to relationship between current and voltage okay, and we will use that. So, as far as the circuits are concerned, the terminal relationship between the current and voltage is good enough. Okay. Now, how do we do that? This current I flowing, which is the same as the current I flowing in the terminal is given by the rate of change of charge. That is the definition of current. right? if this q is increasing that means that there is some current flowing that way in fact that current is what is causing the q to increase now from physics you know that there are uh, these fields and when you have these time varying fields you will have currents and so on it's known as displacement current again we won't worry about that we'll have some uh, voltage across this and current can flow in response to this voltage or a voltage can be changing in response to the current Okay. Now, from this relationship, we have C times dV by dt. It is of course, assumed that the capacitance itself is a constant. Okay. This is a given for all the capacitors that we will be using. So, we have this relationship I equals C times dV by dt and this is the V i relationship of a capacitor. The current is related to the time derivative of the voltage across the capacitor. Now, this comes from the linear relationship between charge and voltage 
which we have converted to uh, relationship between uh, current and voltage. Okay, so for the purpose of uh, analyzing circuits, this is the relationship we will be using. The because the IV relationship of a capacitor consists of a time derivative, we cannot draw a graph of I versus V. Okay, so that's possible only if a particular value of V gives a particular value of I or vice versa. Okay, in this case, it's not possible. Now, what does this say? If V is increasing at the rate of let us say 1 volts per second and C is let us say 1 microfarad. This means that I is C times d V by d T is 1 microfarad times 1 volt per second equals 1 microampere. So, 1 microampere current will be flowing through the capacitor. Okay. It also implies another thing that if the current is finite, that is if the circuit is such that the current through the capacitor is restricted to a finite value, then the voltage across the capacitor cannot change abruptly. Okay. So, if the currents are finite, the voltage across the capacitor has to be continuous. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, you do find a discontinuity in the voltage across a capacitor, that means that the current had to be infinite at the instant of the discontinuity, okay? because a voltage uh, changing instantaneously means that the charge on the plates of the capacitor changing instantaneously. That means that the current which is the rate of change of charge is infinite, because there was a certain non-zero charge change in a zero time interval. So, that means an infinite current. Okay. I is given by C d V by d T and if you invert this, we get the voltage to be 1 over C integral I d T. Okay. Now, if I carry out the integral from some T naught to T 1, okay, what it says is V of T 1 is 1 over C integral I d T plus V of T 0. Okay. That is the change in the voltage between T 0 and T 1 is the integral of the current, which is the charge uh, accumulated between T 0 and T 1 divided by the capacitance C. Okay. So, let us say the current follows some waveform like this and this is T 0 and this is T 1. I have drawn it versus time and if you plot the voltage, it has some value at T equals T 0. This is the voltage and it will increase in some way and at T 1 it will be V of T 1 and this increase V of T 1 minus V of T 0 is given by the area under this curve, area under the current curve divided by C. Okay. So, this whole thing equals the area under the current curve divided by C. So, that is what this is saying. Okay. Now, because of this uh, integral relationship, there is some memory, right? The initial value of the capacitor's voltage appears here. So, a capacitor is said to be 
an element with memory it remembers what happened before okay the voltage at a particular instant is not related to the current at that instant but the current at all the previous instants okay so that's why a capacitor has memory okay and this is also uh, apparent from the terminology normally used to describe a capacitor like it stores charge and so on okay and this is in contrast to a resistor whose current depends only on the voltage at that instant or whose voltage at a given instant depends only on the current at that instant okay a resistor has no memory